Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson we're going to do some more differential equations, and this time focus in on exponential models, and how we deal with exponential growth and exponential decay, and we can tell it's just straight from a differential equation. So uh, let's start off with this review of Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Here is an exponential function, y equals a b to the variable t. So a this is what we would call our initial value, how much we start off with in some type of word problem, in some type of model. It's our beginning value. The b here, and these are numbers, this a and b, these are both numbers. The b would represent the growth or decay factor. So if b, that number there, the base of the exponent, if that's larger than 1, then we're going to be multiplying by a number larger than 1, and this initial value will grow. If b is smaller than 1, well, in between 0 and 1, then we're going to multiply this initial value by a number smaller than 1, which causes this to shrink. Okay, so that's just a quick little review of what exponential functions are and how they are written out with this standard form. Now let's take the derivative. I want to look at the differential equation of this thing. So the derivative with respect to t, that means dy dt is going to equal, so this is like a coefficient, a and b are both constants, okay, or both numbers here. So a times b raised to the exponent t, right? So a is a coefficient, just comes down. Now I'm doing the derivative of an exponential function, so it's just itself times, now you remember how you do this? If it's not e to the, when it's e to the x, it's easy. It's just e to the x. But when it's something other number raised to the x, or raised to a variable, then you then have to tag on the natural log of the base. All right, now let's take a look at this. Here's something interesting. This right here, that is a times b to the t, that's right here, it's y. So I could rewrite this as dy dt, notice I'm starting to raise smaller because I'm going to have one more line down here, dy dt, and now this thing is a y, times, and then I have natural log of b, so I substitute y in for a times b to the t, and then what is the natural log of b? I don't know because I don't know what b is, but I do know that b is a number. So my final thing that I'm going to write is that dy dt, the rate of change of y, is equal to some constant. So I could call it c, I could call it anything I want, really. So let's call it k, because that's what we've done in the past. And I'll show you why in a second here. So some constant k times y. Every single exponential growth or decay model will can be represented as a differential equation like this. So when you see this form, that represents exponential model, an exponential growth or decay. And how do we know if it's growth or decay? If k is greater than zero, in this case, so if this k is positive, then it is an exponential growth. And if k is less than zero, you guessed it, then it would be exponential decay. So when this thing's negative, it's an exponential decay model. All right, so now let's read this. This is kind of weird. The rate of change of a quantity is proportional to the size of the quantity. Remember how we did this at the beginning of this unit, this proportionality stuff is proportional. That's why I used k. I knew where we were going here, so I wanted to use the letter k for proportionality. So the rate of change of a quantity, well, in this case, the quantity is just y, right? That's my quantity. The rate of change of y, which is dy dt, is proportional to the size of y, the quantity. So proportional to the same quantity. So the idea of this lesson is recognizing how this represents exponential models. This dy over dt equals k times y. Okay, let's use it. First problem here, all we're doing is setting up a differential equation. That's it. So the weight of an animal. So we can use whatever variables we want here, right? Let's say the weight is going to be uh, is w, so it's increasing at a rate. So dw, and let's just do it with respect to time. So dw dt is going to equal something that's proportional to the weight. So kw. And then that's it. We set up a differential equation. Now we don't know what k is for this example, but that's all right. We were just trying to set up an equation. It's just some number here, but this represents exponential growth. So here we have bacteria of a population. Let's call population is just going to be p. So I'm going to call this dp dt. Uh, it is shrinking at a rate proportional to its population size. So it's shrinking. This is the rate that it's shrinking, and it's proportional, so it's k, to the population size p. And in this case, k is going to end up being negative because it's shrinking. So if we could figure out what k is, we know it will be negative. All right, so that's just setting it up. It's making sure you recognize how to set these up and then knowing this is exponential growth or decay. 
All right, now let's go the other way. So we have this thing here. We recognize dy dt equals ky. We know this represents exponential growth. Let's solve it using separation of variables. Or in other words, we're going to go backwards from here and we're gonna go back upwards to get this initial thing. First step, divide by y. So I have one over y dy, multiply by the dt, I get k times dt. Now we integrate both sides and I have the natural log of y equals, and this is just a number, right? So it's k, some constant, times t. Oh, don't forget, plus some unknown constant. So plus my c. And what's next? I'm gonna solve this so I get e exponentiate both sides, e raised to this, e raised to this. So I'm gonna have y equals e raised to the k t plus c. Or in other words, y equals, and now this is like a constant in front, e to the c, right? We've done this a whole bunch of times, e raised to the k t. This is important. We have y equals some constant in front and then e raised to the k t. So what we have is that c, this value of c is our initial value. It is how much the model is starting at. It's how much, maybe it's the starting population of, of the number of people or whatever the model is representing. It's the beginning value when t equals zero. So down here, the solution for dy dt equals ky. This is what we started off with. It's always going to be this. It's always that. So we can take shortcuts and you could always solve it by hand, you know, do what I just did, just do it the long way, but it's gonna end up being the same thing every time. And C is just the initial value. Let me go back to this. So this is like, uh, see this A, B to the T thing. So this is Y equals A, B to the T. So A is the initial value. There's my C. B is the E here being raised to the K. That's my B. And then also the, the variable T. All right, so let's put this into practice. Find the particular solution for each differential equation. You could do separation of variables and solve it from there. It would be exactly like we've done in some of our other lessons, but that's not the point of this lesson. This lesson, we're trying to do the shortcuts of recognizing, oh, it's exponential growth. dy dt equals six times y. So we can go straight to the answer. This is how awesome this is. We just go y equals, now what goes in front? C, the initial value. The initial value is when t equals zero, y is five, so five is my initial value. Let's remind you that initial value only happens when the variable t is a zero. So then we go, what? We go e raised to the kt. Well, k is right there, it's six. So it's just six t. And boom, look how much time we just saved. That's it. We didn't have to actually do the separation of variables and solve it with a natural log and all that stuff. If you recognize the pattern, you can go straight to it. Okay, so let's try this one. Uh, now it's x, but that doesn't matter. It's just re with respect to x, it's the same thing. So we'll say y equals, and now what's my initial value? The c. The initial value is four, and then it's e raised to the kt. The k was negative three, so negative three t. And this one is a decay model because of the negative here. The k was negative and it's gonna make it decrease. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now let's put it in a word problem. So we've got some random animal. It weighs three pounds at birth. Now that's important because when I see three pounds at birth, I've got to think, oh, that's my initial amount right there. We're starting off at three pounds. And then three months later, he's at four pounds. The weight of the animal is increasing at a rate that is proportional to its weight. That's the key. That's what tells me it's exponential. When I see that something's increasing at a rate that's proportional to the something, so its weight is increasing, increasing at a rate proportional to its weight. So that means dw dt for the weight is going to equal some constant times w. That is my differential equation. So I've just set up the differential equation for this scenario. I don't know what k is though. That's a question mark. What the heck is k? I don't know yet. It's all right, we'll figure it out. So now we're going to answer the question, how much will the animal weigh when it is five months old? We can't do that until we figure out the, the equation, right? Let's. Let's figure out what W equals. So W equals uh, my initial amount, C, which was three pounds. So three pounds, E raised to the K T. Now I still don't know what K is, but that's where they gave us some more information. Right there, four pounds, three months later. So if I plug in a three into the T, then that means the weight, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna now move up here. The weight is now four, 
and that's going to equal 3e raised to the k times 3 for three months later. That's my time, 3. All right, so let's try and solve for k now. So I get 4 thirds equals e raised to the, let's call that 3k. Take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of 4 thirds equals 3k. Natural log of both sides cancels out the e. And then you're going to have to divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to pull up my calculator here and figure out what that equals. And this is what my calculator told me, 0 0.09589. So remember how we would say, I'm going to do an approximation sign. Remember how we would say, uh, you can just go three decimals. The problem right now is if I only go three decimals, 0 0.095, let's say I were truncating and just went to five or rounded up to six. I have a problem with this because I'm rounding early. You're going to have a rounding error. Do not round early in problems when you're working on calculus problems. You want to use as much of the decimal as possible. Well, that's a pain like writing out eight, nine, what was it? Four, zero, two, four, two. Like I'm gonna write that whole thing. And then that is even a, a rounded answer anyway. The calculator can only show so many decimals. That's accurate to probably as much as we need. But if we only went three decimals, that's not accurate enough. But there's a cool thing with the calculator that you can have it store. So let me show you this. Let me pull up my calculator and pull this over here. And so what I'm going to do is take my answer and store it. Now, I don't know, again, on all your calculators, I don't know how, so you might have to look this up before this TI-84. It's down here, this store button. So I'm gonna click store, and it's gonna take my answer and store it as whatever I want. I'm gonna plug it in as alpha A. See there in green right there? I'm gonna plug it as alpha A. So it's storing it as A and hit enter. All right, so now the calculator is remembering that my answer, not just to that decimal, but to all the decimals that come after that too, the calculator is remembering it. All right, so now I come back to this. Let me get rid of this thing. And now I can answer this question. What is the weight of the animal? So the weight at five months, so W of five, is going to equal my initial, where is it? It's right here, this thing, 3EKT. So 3E, now it's not a K. I know what K is, it's this long thing, but I don't wanna type that whole thing out. So instead, I'm just gonna say, oh yeah, I stored it as A in my calculator. And then that makes this much easier. And then the time was what? The time is five months. So I'm gonna do five months. And now you just plug that whole thing into the calcula calculator. So W of five equals, plug this whole thing in by just typing three, raise it to the E, and then this is where I say my A. So I have to recall my A, alpha, and then that button pulls up the A, times that by five, boom, and there's my answer. Let's move it over there. So I should say approximately, right? Because I am gonna round this. So the weight is about, at five months old, it's about 4.845, and I could either round it or truncate it. So round it up to six or five. This is where you round your answer. At your final answer, I cannot exp uh, emphasize how important this is. Do not round early. This is what you want to do for uh, for where you round, the very end, not when you're working through a problem, because you will get marked off on those problems. You'll get them wrong. Okay, last thing to talk about, and then we're all finished. Uh, growth model, I kind of already did this. Growth models, it is going to have a positive exponent. If it's a decay model, it'll have an e raised to a negative exponent. Why is it negative right there? Because of this the negative exponent makes it become a reciprocal. So one over E is actually smaller than one, and that's what causes it. The seven would get smaller, smaller, smaller. So these are just examples real quick. Okay, doubling time and half-life. This is a very common type of a problem to see on an AP exam. So I threw a few of these out at you. So let's start off with a population that we don't know. All we know is that it's doubling every seven years. We don't know what K is. We don't know what the original population was. So how are we supposed to do this? Let me show you. Y represents the population equals. We have some initial population. I don't know what it is, so let's just say the, a constant c, and then it's e raised to the k, we don't know what k is, and then t. So there's our formula that we're working with. It is okay if we don't know what the initial population is. Let me show you why. I'm going to call this the initial population y not. A little sub-zero here, that means y not. <laughs> not like y... Not why not, like why not do this? Never mind. Okay, so it's like a physics thing. And then if this is the initial population and I'm doubling it, that means over here I'm going to have twice as much. So whatever why not is, it's doubled it. So that's why it's not necessary to know what the exact initial population was for doing this doubling time and half-life. If it was a half-life problem where it was getting half the time or half the quantity, then instead of a two, you would just put a one-half instead. Okay, that's the difference. 
And then over here we say e raised to the, the k I don't know. I'm trying to solve that, but this happens after seven years. So I can plug in a seven. So I have double the initial population after seven years. Or in other words, if I divide both sides by this y not thing, the initial y, you could just have this. e raised to the, put that in the other order, makes it a little cleaner, 7k. So this is how these problems get set up. It's always gonna be, if it's doubling, you're just gonna have a two over here. If it's a half life, it's gonna be a one half. And then you could kind of think of this as like your initial population was just a one. There's like an imaginary one in front of it. It doesn't matter what the initial population is because whatever it is, we're doubling it and then you would divide it and cancels. Okay, so now we just solve this. So uh, what are we gonna have? We're gonna take the natural log of both sides. So natural log of two equals, and then this just becomes seven K. And then you divide both sides by seven. So K is approximately, there's my answer here. What did I get? Zero point. And, and you can round this now, right? Because this is our final answer. It's just saying what's, what is the value of K? So we can jump straight to it. 0 0.099 and three decimals enough here. After that, it comes zero. You can go more decimals if you want, but three is plenty for our final answer for what they're asking for. All right, we've covered everything you need now. So hopefully this will be an easy enough one for you. Rock that mastery check. And for the AB students, this is the end of unit seven. For BC students, we've got one more lesson before you finish up unit seven. So good luck on that test.